Greetings, this is going to be Temple of God, Part 4. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. In the previous studies, we covered the divorce of northern Israel, well, the split of northern Israel, the divorce of northern Israel, northern Israel going into captivity, uh, part of Judah going into captivity, the Assyrian army trying to take Jerusalem, and the Assyrian army being decimated. So now, uh, we have Judah has been spared by the Lord's hand, and uh, I think it was like 120 years later, the uh, Babylonians would come and take Jerusalem into captivity, where they would go into Babylon for 70 years. And uh, Jeremiah and the book of Daniel covers this. So we're going to read about uh, the events. Now, Jerusalem, Jerusalem was... Uh, you know, they were doing their little temple sacrifices, but, you know, their heart wasn't in it. You know, they would serve the devil and then go and, you know, do sacrifices unto the Lord. But, you know, it just wasn't, their heart wasn't in it. And the Bible says you can't partake the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Well, that's what Jerusalem was doing, the cup of devils. So let's read some things about what the Bible says about Jerusalem prior to this time. I mean, Jeremiah, oh boy, he's, he, had a, he had a couple things to say. He was the prophet of doom and gloom. And, uh, you know, if you... Uh, if you had a, um, a ministry, a prophetic ministry during the bad, you know, the bad times when the um, people were doing, were evil, uh, and you were a prophet, son of the Lord, you generally ha didn't have a very long lifespan, you know, because they would shoot the messenger. Yeah. Hey, don't shoot me. I'm just the messenger. Well, we don't like what you're saying. Shut up off with his head, you know, or whatever they did. According to legend, the prophet Isaiah, they stuck him inside a hollow log and then took a, a, a saw and cut him in half. How, uh, how would you like that? Why? Why would they do that to Isaiah? Well, Isaiah 3 and verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. I guess they were making the Lord angry. What do you think? Jeremiah 4.14 O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness. You know, that's basically what baptism is a sign of. You're basically washing your flesh from the filth of the flesh. It's symbolic, you know. Now, there are churches that will tell you, well, you got you to gotta be baptized in the water or you're not going to be saved. Um, I think it's the Church of Christ, if I remember correctly. They call them Campbellites because their founder was a guy named Campbell. But was the thief on the cross, was he water baptized? No. No, he wasn't. Well, if he was, it's not recorded in Scripture. Um, you know, Jesus said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I believe Jesus. That's the difference between me and a lot of other people. I believe Jesus. I may not like everything Jesus says, uh, but... I believe it. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, 
that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Jeremiah 8, 5. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. Jeremiah 9, 11. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragons. What did the, who is called the, the, uh, the great dragon? Satan, in Revelation chapter 12. That old serpent, uh, the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. And I will make Jerusalem heaps and a den of dragon, and I will make the cities of Judah desolate without inhabitant. inhabitant. Jeremiah thirteen twenty seven, I have seen thine adulteries and thy nangs and the lewdness of thy whoredom and thy abominations on the hills in the fields. Woe unto thee, O Jerusalem! Wilt thou not be made clean? When shall it once be? Jeremiah 19.3. This is depressing to me. This really is, because you could take the word Jerusalem and substitute the word America, or Europe, or England, or Germany. No different. No different. Not my book. Maybe the Lord has, maybe the Lord would disagree with me, but I don't know. That's kind of my take on it. Jeremiah 19.3, And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Jeremiah 23.14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible thing, they commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hands of evildoers that none doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Wow. Comparing them to Sodom and Gomorrah. Jeremiah 44 verse 9. Do you get the feeling that Jeremiah was uh, had a few couple things to say to uh, Jerusalem and the kings and uh, the people? Oh yeah. Jeremiah forty four nine. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers and the wickedness of the kings of Judah and the wickedness of your wives and your wickedness and the wickedness of your wives? Which they have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Uh, it did say that what, right twice. And the wickedness of their wives, and the wickedness of their wives, and the wicked and your own wickedness, and the wickedness of your wives. So it's of their wives and your wives. I thought I read it wrong, but I didn't. Which have committed in the land of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. The Bible book of Lamentations, 1 and verse 8. Um, Lamentations was written by Jeremiah. He was lamenting, sorrowing over what was either had happened or was going to happen. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned. Therefore she has removed all that honored her despise her, because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backward. Ezekiel 16.2, another difficult book. Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Now there's a difference between sin. God hates all sin. Sin's transgression of the law. But an abomination is an extra special sin that God really, 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 really hates hates things like sodomy, witchcraft. Those are abominations. Son of man caused Jerusalem to know her abominations. Malachi 2.11 
Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord, which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. God loved Judah. God loved Israel. But they profaned the holiness of God and married the daughter of a strange God. Revelation 11.8 Speaking about the two witnesses that confront the Antichrist. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, the Bible never says much, anything good about Egypt that I know of. If anybody knows where the Bible says anything good about Egypt, I'd really appreciate it if you'd post a comment because I can't find nothing. You know, maybe it's in the Bible. I've read it before, but I forgot or just don't remember. But as far as I know, the Bible doesn't say anything good about Egypt. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was our Lord crucified? Uh, Rome? No. Um, Mecca? Uh, no. New York City? Uh, no. London? No. Moscow, Russia? No. Istanbul, Turkey? No. Where was the Lord Jesus crucified? Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Jesus speaking in Matthew 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Jesus said, Jerusalem killed the prophets. Do you know Revelation says that Mystery Babylon killed the prophets? Huh. Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. Jesus said Jerusalem killed the prophets. Therefore, Mystery Babylon's Rome. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's their logic. But, but the Romans put Jesus to death. Uh, I, think you ought to, I think you ought to tell that to Paul. And you ought to tell that to John. The book of John. Where Pilate said, where it says that, uh, and from that time Pilate tried to release him. Yeah, no, it wasn't the Romans. Pilate didn't. Pilate tried three times to let Jesus go, but the uh, you know who's would have nothing to do with that. Uh uh But they blame Rome anyways. You know what? I, I honestly, God blinds, God blinds their eyes. I, I really see, I, I believe that with all my heart. God blinds their eyes because how can you, how can you come up with this stuff when it's plain in the Bible? I mean, if you read the Bible, you'd know. I mean, I'm not no scholar. I'm just some guy that's turned the TV off and read the Bible once in a while. Matter of fact, uh, these Bible studies is my reading Bible time, you know? A lot of this stuff I'm doing from memory. Uh, I mean, I can't memorize, I can't, I don't memorize the Bible verses, but I mean, I look stuff up online, and then I just read it to you right off of online, but I got kind of an idea of where things are. I know where to look, because I've been through this once or twice, you know, this ain't my first rodeo. Um... It might be my second or third, but it's not my first. Now, remember the story of uh, the Tower of Babel? Babel? <clears throat> Babel. I've heard it pronounced both ways. I could be wrong. Um, I probably need to take hooked on phonics, but, you know, 
uh, dates and names to me were never that important. It's more what's more important to me is the content. You know what happened and why and what was the judgment. But most of the Bible scholars that I know believe that the Tower of Babel or Babel uh, was uh, land of Shinar, which is where Babylon was. Matter of fact, a lot of people think that Babylon was where the uh, Tower of Babel was. You know, Satan rebuilding his kingdom. So, you know, Babylon was the uh, root of all the virtually all the false religions if you go back far enough i mean when you think about it you know so let's take a look at babylon matter of fact do you know that the uh, the you know who's the israelis have a commentary on what they call their scriptures two words it's called the tall, T-A-L-L, -L, second word, mud. Take those two words, tall and mud, put them together, delete one of the L's, and that's what the book is called. And guess where it came from? Babylon. Matter of fact, it's called the Babylonian tall and mud. Yeah. And um, you used to be able to find a lot of stuff on the internet from their own sources. It's getting to be um, more difficult to find now. But um, I've read it in paper copy at the uh, city of Boca Raton, which is one of the largest communities of the uh, you-know-whos in South Florida, which South Florida is the third largest community of you-know-whos in the United States. New York City is number one. They have about two million there. 25% uh, of New York City is the you-know-whos. Believe it or not, about 25% of the city. And then um, Los Angeles, Hollywood, California, and all that, that's number two. And then South Florida is number three. But I went to Boca Raton, which is one of their huge neighborhoods. Uh, matter of fact, it's the... I think it's the second largest city in the second or third largest city in my county. And uh, I went to the public library there in the reference section, and they had a paper copy of it. And I read it in either 1990 or 1991. Well, I mean, not the whole thing. It's like an encyclopedia. But I read a lot of excerpts from it. I, I know enough about it to know that, uh, oh, every once in a while you'll find a pearl but it's like digging through raw sewage to find that pearl, you know. Um, there's actually some good stuff in the uh, tall uh, and mud. There's actually some good stuff. There's actually some rabbis uh, whose writings I actually respected uh, and admire because, you know, the thing was is when I first came to the Lord, I thought, well, you know, I want to study the Old Testament. And I thought, what, am I going to go to the Baptists and study the Old Testament? Or am I going to go to the Lutherans or the Catholics or the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons? You know, hey, no, 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 no. I, I'm going to go to the you-know-whos because, hey, that's their book, right? So I started studying it from their perspective and their books. And I got quite an education. Of course, I had people direct me, so... All right, so let's take a look at, um, so Jerusalem was in apostasy, and uh, God had had enough of this stuff, and he's going to send them into captivity for 70 years. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, uh, let's go to 2 Kings uh, the uh, book of Kings, the second book, chapter 20. Turn to verse 1. I guess we're going to read, probably end up reading the whole chapter. Um, this is very applicable. 
In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. Now, Hezekiah was a good king. Uh, there weren't many of those, um, but there was a few. Judah had a few good kings. Uh, Israel, I don't know if Israel had any good kings. I really, I, I can't think of any. All Israel's kings that I think about, they're all, they're all bad. They had bad kings and then they had worse. But Jeru uh, Jerusalem, Judah, had a few good kings. They had some that were bad. They had some that were even worse than Israel's bad kings, if that's possible. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah, yeah, that Isaiah, the Isaiah that had a book, you know, it's one of the largest books in the Bible, Isaiah. Isaiah is the most quoted book in the New Testament uh, quoted by Jesus, or the most referenced. So, Isaiah is an important book. It really is. I did a commentary on it. All 66 chapters. I didn't do a long, long, long commentary. You know, most of those commentaries were 15, 20 minutes, because, you know, just doing, I just did one chapter at a time. But uh, I learned a lot. Believe it or not, I learned a lot doing these Bible studies. I learned something every time I do one. Praise the Lord. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass afore Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears, behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord, and I will add unto thy days fifteen years, and I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Uh, now remember, uh, part three of this series, uh, I covered where uh, God, uh, okay, Assyria had come up, taken northern Israel and their capital, Samaria, captive. And they had taken a lot of the fenced cities in Judah. And then they came on to the doorstep of Jerusalem, and they tried to take it, but the Lord, an angel of the Lord struck them down, 185,000 Assyrian soldiers dead. That is one big army, people. Let me tell you something. So this is, um, I guess as of this point, the Assyrians hadn't, uh, they were at the either coming or they were on the at the doorsteps so the Lord hadn't struck down the um, Assyrian army yet verse 6 2nd Kings 20 and verse 6 and I will uh, add unto thee I will add unto thy days 15 years and I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend the city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake and Isaiah said, Take a lump of figs, and they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Ah. All right, so let's read that again. And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward?
forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Um, I did the math and I came up with 40 minutes for 10 degrees. And I looked it up on the uh, internet and it agreed with me. So I guess I did the math right. Um, oh, I guess two years of college uh, wasn't totally down the tubes. But, um, you know, it'd be nothing for the sun to keep going uh, 10 degrees. But for the sun to go, instead of going from the east to the west, have it go from back east for 40 minutes and then start again, uh, that would be a miracle from God. You know, when the, the sun direction changed course for 40 minutes, you know, instead of the sundial going forward, go backwards. So, verse 10. And Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. Nay, but let the shadow return backward 10 degrees. And Isaiah the prophet cried unto the Lord, and he, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward, by which it had gone down in the dial of Ahaz. So Ahaz had a, uh, I guess, a sundial, right? At the time, Barodachbalad, Balakadon, the son of Baladon, King of Babylon, King of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. So here it is, uh, the son of Babylon, the, the son of the king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. All right? And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things. Oh yeah, come check this out. Here's my silver room. Here's my gold room. Here's my pearls. Here's my diamonds. Check it out, dude. Boy, I got all kinds of good stuff, don't I? And I'm sure the son of the king of Babylon's eyes were super wide going, wow. Hmm. Hmm. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, the silver and the gold and the spices and precious ointment, and all the house of his armor and all that was found in his treasure. There was nothing in his house nor in all his dominion that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah and said, and said unto him, What said these men? And from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in my house have they seen. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall, be, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Uh, do you know what a eunuch is? Uh, that's uh, where they go snip snip down there guys so that uh, you can't uh, none of the king's wives will uh, be you won't be able to cheat on uh, none of the king's wives of Babylon would be able to cheat with you yeah that's what a eunuch is yeah not a very good thing uh, Daniel was uh, evidently one of the eunuchs. It appears to be that way uh, because he was in uh, over, he was in uh, one of the eunuch the king one of the king's servants who was head of the eunuchs was uh, over David. I mean, I'm sorry, Daniel, not David, Daniel. So evidently, and Daniel was a prince of Judah. Daniel was you know, and Daniel accepted his fate. And it doesn't ever say where da Daniel uh, got married and had children. So, 
yeah, mm, not a good, not something I would be looking forward to. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, Is it not good if peace and truth be, uh, be in my days? And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh his son reigned in his stead. Manasseh, not a very good king. No, not, not if my memory serves me correctly. Second Kings, chapter 21, start in verse 1. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, and reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hephzibah. And he did that which was evil. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. For he built up again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. And he reared up altars for Baal and made a grove as did Ahab, king of Israel. Perhaps you've heard of Ahab and Jezebel, really bad king and queen of Israel. And he made a grove, as did Ahab, king of Israel, and worshipped all the host of heaven, all the fallen angels, the devils, the demons, and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord said, In Jerusalem will I put my name, and he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. So he turned the house, uh, basically he turned the house of the Lord into a, a house of devils. You wonder why the Lord carried away Jerusalem captive, captive into Babylon? Oh, you want to serve devils? Well, you can go serve your devils in Babylon. No problem. Verse 6, and he made his son pass through the fire. He burned his own son alive, human sacrifice to the devil. And he made his son pass through the fire and, he, and observed times. Can you say astrology? And observed times and used enchantments and dealt with familiar spirits. They conducted seances. Familiar spirits, ghosts, devils, demons, whatever you, by whatever name you want to call them. Why are the spirits called familiar? Because you've dealt with them a number of times. They're not strangers. You're familiar with them. And dealt with familiar spirits. And wizards, he wrought what much wickedness in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a graven image of the grove that he'd made in the house of which the Lord said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I make the feet of Israel move any more out of the land which I gave their fathers, only, only if, only if they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they hearkened not, and Manasseh seduced them to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. So not only Israel went in and destroyed all the Satan worshipers, but guess what? Then Judah did even worse than they did to do more evil than did the nations whom the Lord destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake by his servants the prophets, saying, Because Manasseh king of Judah hath done these abominations and have done wicked, wickedly above all that the Amorites did, which were before him, and hath made Judah also to sin with his idols. Therefore thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, behold, I am bringing such evil upon 
Jerusalem and Judah, that whosoever heareth of it, both his ears shall tingle. Now remember, Isaiah had even said the same thing. And Isaiah also said that, um, told Hezekiah, well, you know, your sons are going to be eunuchs in the house of the king of Babylon and all your stuff, all the jewels and gold and silver, they're, they're going to go to Babylon. They're going to be carried away. Verse 13. And I will stretch over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plump plummet of the house of Ahab. And I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipeth a dish, wiping it and turning, turning it upside down. In other words, it's going to be wiped clean. And I will forsake the remnant of mine inheritance and deliver them into the hand of their enemies, and they shall become a prey and a spoil to all their enemies. Because they have done that which was evil in my sight and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came forth out of Egypt, even unto this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, beside his sin wherewith he made Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he had, uh, that he sinned, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah, and Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Oh boy, here comes the punchline. And Ammon was twenty and two years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Haruz of Jothba. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as his father Manasseh did. Boy, does this, uh, is this a familiar theme or what? Verse 21. And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him and slew the king in his own house. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah, Josiah his son king in his stead. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And he was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Now, Josiah was a good king. He was the last, probably at this time, the last good king that Judah had had. He was a really good king. I love reading about his life. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. Boy, what was I doing at eight years old? Playing with uh, mud pies? I don't know. What was I doing at eight years old? I don't even know. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, Jedi Da, a Jedi. What do you know? The daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And he did that which was right. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. And it came to pass in the 80th year of King Josiah that the king sent um, Shaphan, the son of Azaliah, the son of Meshulam, the scribe, to the house of the Lord, saying, Go to Hilkiah, the high priest, that he may sum the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord, which the keepers of the door have gathered of the people, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work that have oversight of the house of the Lord, and let them give it to the doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord, 
to repair the breaches of the house, unto carpenters and builders and masons, and buy timber and hewn stone to repair the house. Howbeit there was no reckoning made with them of the money that was delivered into their hand, because they dealt faithfully. In other words, they didn't count out the money. They just gave it to them because they were honest. You know, they weren't going to steal from the Lord. You want to steal, that's one thing, but you don't want to steal from the Lord's peep hand. Uh-uh. No. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. So here it is, they're renovating the Lord's house, and they found the book of the law. They found the Torah. And um, so, you know, you got a godly king, you got a godly priest, high priest, a high priest, and they start reading the book, and they're going, oh my, we haven't been doing this. Everything the Lord says to do, we haven't done. And everything the Lord says not to do, we've been doing. Oh boy, we're in trouble. Woo doggy. And Hilkiah, the high priest, said unto Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, and he read it. And Shaphan, the scribe, came to the king and brought the king word again and said, Thy servants have gathered the money that was found in the house and have delivered it into the hand of them that do the work, that have oversight of the house of the Lord. And Shaphan the scribe showed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass, when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah the priest and Ahikam, Ahi the son of Shaphan, and Ak Akbor, the son of Mich Michaliah, and Shaphan the scribe, and Asahiah the servant of the king, saying, Go ye, inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is, for great is the wrath. So go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according to all that which is written concerning us. Now remember something. A godly servant of the Lord probably took these the law and probably hid it in the Lord's house, in the temple somewhere, where it wouldn't be found. Otherwise, uh, the evil Manasseh and the kings before him uh, would have probably destroyed it. So they hid it. And then when the um, temple was getting renovated, it was discovered. And then they read it, and they're like, oh boy, we're, not, we're in big trouble, aren't we? So Hilkiah the priest, and Ahikam, and Ak Akbor, and Safhan, and Esahiah went unto Hulda, the prophetess. Ah, you got a prophetess, a woman prophet. Went unto Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom, Shalom, the son of Tikvah, the son of Harhas, keeper of the wardrobe. Now she dwelt in Jerusalem in the college. Ah, uh, college. I guess they had a college for the... Uh, the prophets, or the scribes, I'm not sure. And they communed with her. And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Do you know that there are at least three female prophetess in the Bible? This was one. Deborah in the book of Judges is another. And uh, Anna was a prophetess in the days of uh, I think John the Baptist, I think. 
I I believe that's true. So there was at least three female prophets in the Bible. You know, when, when the Lord can't find a man with a heart as pure as a woman, he'll use a woman. Believe me, he will use a woman. I've, I've talked to one of them, I think. Gail Ripplinger. I'm not saying she's a prophetess, but uh, she wrote a book on the, uh, on the King James Bible. And I'll tell you what, her book was better than the, um, the college, Bible college class I did defending the King James Bible. I may not agree with all her conclusions, but the work that she did, phenomenal. There was a guy named Peter Ruckman. Uh, when it came to the King James Bible, generally I agree with him. He was a Zionist and a dispensationalist, which I can't figure that one out. But, but when it came to defending the King James Bible, even though he interpreted it wrong in my opinion, uh, he was pretty good about defending the King James Bible and knowing the different manuscripts uh, that are in the care of the Vatican. Uh, I don't think I'd trust anything that the Vatican touches, but, you know, that's just me. But let me tell you something. Peter Ruckman is pretty well respected when it comes to uh, defending Bible manuscripts and the King James Bible. You know what he said? He said that Gail Ripplinger's book was better than his. That's a, that's a heck of a, uh, you know, that's like when Jesus said that, uh, you know, of all those born of women, there's not a greater prophet than John the Baptist. That's, that's one of those kind of recommendations. That lady is, boy, I'll tell you what, I learned a lot from her. Yeah. She's one of the ones that I learned a lot from. I have a lot of respect for that lady. And they blast her. And they say, oh, well, you sh a woman shouldn't be talking in church. Well, she's, she's not a preacher. She's you know, warning people about stuff. So, I don't know. If a man, if the Lord can't find a man with a heart as pure as a woman, he will, can and will use a woman. And I'll tell you what, I'd rather listen to Gail Ripplinger on the Bible than a whole bunch of heretics like James White. That devil. Yeah. So you ought to listen to him sometimes. He debates Muslims. The Muslims that say that the Bible's corrupted. And and James White will say, well, yeah, it is corrupted, but but we went, we know where the mistakes are so we can correct them. Really? So you're basically agreeing with the Muslims that the Bible's no good so that they have to use the Quran to correct the Bible with. The guy's a heretic, but everybody thinks he's so great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think so. And then they'll say, ah, well, you know, Gail's a woman, and James White's a man, so we should listen to the man. Yeah, well, Satan's a male too, you know. Keep that in mind. So, Hulda the prophetess. Verse 15, And she said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Tell the man that sent you to me, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place and upon the inhabitants thereof, even all the words of the book which the king of Judah hath read, because they have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods that they might provoke me to anger with all the works of their hands, that my wrath shall be kindled against this place and shall not be quenched. But to the king of Judah, which, hath, uh, which sent you to inquire of the Lord, thus shall ye say to him, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, as touching the words which thou hast heard, because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, when thou heardest that I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. 
Behold, therefore, I will gather thee unto thy fathers, and thou shalt be gathered into thy grave in peace, and thine eyes shall not see all the evil which I will bring upon this place. And they brought the king word again. Oh, boy. And the king sent, and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord, and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him, and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of the Lord. We're in chapter 23, by the way, verse 3. And the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book. And all the people stood to the covenant and the king, king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove and for all the host of heaven and he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests. Have you ever put, uh, heard somebody say, oh, my dog, I had to put him down or I had to put her down? Think about that. And he put down the idolatrous priests. Yeah whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Judah and in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the planets and to all the host of heaven. Yeah, they were burning incense to Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto and Venus and Mercury and all who knows what else. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. Listen to this. I love it. Verse 7. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. Uh, do you think the Sodomites were inside the house when he broke them down? I wouldn't be surprised. Why would you break down the houses of the Sodomites? Because they were cursed. You think San Francisco is cursed? I do. Disagree with me? That's okay. One day we'll find out, won't we? And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. And he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burned incense from Gibba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua. <laughs> Excuse me. The governor of the city, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom. Uh, this is the valley of slaughter. I think this is the valley of Armageddon. I really do. Uh, but I could be wrong. I'm just, I'm just taking a wild guess here. And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. No more burning your children alive. And he took away the horses that the kings of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs, and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. Chariots of the sun. Uh, so are you getting the idea here? So, you know, he, he broke down the images, cut down the groves, filled the places with the bones of men. That's verse 14. Um, wow. 
he uh wow he did a lot here all right let's go to verse 21 oh verse 20 and he slew all the priests of the high places that were upon the altars and burned men's bones upon them and returned to jerusalem he killed the satan the sat satanic priests he killed them and he slew all the priests of the high places and guess what god honored josiah did you know there was a church of satan it was founded in los angeles in uh june 6 1966 uh, around the mid 90s early to early to mid 90s they relocated there was a from what i understand there was a christian detective in los angeles that was hot on their trail and he discovered an orange grove with a bunch of babies bodies i wish i could tell you the name but there was a an off-duty police officer his wife had just given birth and the baby was in the hospital uh i don't know if exactly uh you know it, it wasn't he wasn't with the wife the baby was actually in the the nursery and uh, he was admiring his kid through the glass and you know there's a bunch of kids there um so he noticed this woman came in uh in street clothes went into the bathroom and changed into a nurse's uniform and then she was kind of milling around looking around now let me tell you something about hospitals hospitals are usually short staffed with nurses and they get nurses uh what do they call them uh, a nurse registry which is kind of like uh, when you're short of nurses, you call the nurse registry. Uh, it's sort of like rent a nurse for the day. You know, rent a, rent a nurse today. And uh, that's quite, that's quite, uh, un, it's not unusual. I mean, it's a normal thing for a lot of hospitals. So she was kind of milling around and she waited until everybody was out of the nursery. And then she went in, grabbed his kid and went back into the bathroom, changed into uh, street clothing out of her nurse's uniform, and uh, started walking off with the kid. And he got real suspicious. And he's like, what the heck's going on here? So he kind of kept track of her. And, um, and as she was walking out the do front door, he pulled out his uh, pistol pointed it smack at her head and told her if you drop that kid or her that kid i'm blowing your brains out he says i'll kill you and he told the front desk he yelled at the front desk call the call the police department i'm an officer on duty he showed everybody his badge i'm an off-duty cop and this woman just kidnapped my child well they arrested her they went to her home her apartment or whatever it was and guess what they found all kinds of satanic literature, Church of Satan material, uh, the satanic calendar that told them what kind of sacrifices to do on what days with what, you know, baby boys on this day, baby girls on this day, uh, ages of children. Uh, the big satanic holidays are Christmas, Easter, and Halloween. Why is that not surprising, right? So when he discovered this, uh, he started, you know, she had a spot or something circled on a map, uh, an orange grove. And they went out in the orange grove and started digging around and snooping around. And they found dozens of babies' skeletons. Dozens of them. And uh, there wasn't much in the news. You know, they don't want you to know what's going on. So this guy was hot on the, um, on the trail of the Church of Satan. And um, so, you know, uh, they, uh, the Church of Satan said, oh, things are too hot here. So guess what they did? They moved. They went to Denver, Colorado. The uh, daughter of the founder of the Church of Satan moved to Aurora, which is a suburb, which is where I lived. She only lived about three or four blocks away, I heard. Um, his name was uh, Anton Levy. 
Uh, he changed his name to LaVey. They try to tell you his name was Howard Stanton, but that's a lie. Um, but I was going out in the woods a lot. I was doing a lot of camping back in them days. And I used to find animals with their heads cut off and the blood drained. Yeah, that was some freaky stuff, man. You're out in the woods and you see this dead animal. Matter of fact, I found a dead uh, cow out in the middle of a field. And we were up at 10,000 feet, tree line, and it's tundra. And, you know, we used to drive the truck around and then come back the next year after the winter. You know, you're talking six months later or nine months later, and you can still still see the tire tracks in the, the, the ground from the year before. Well, this cow was out in the middle of a field, and there was no tire tracks, and it had been recently done. So how did they get there? I was like, wow, did they actually use a helicopter? Because there was no tire tracks anywhere. I thought, boy, that's some weird stuff, boy. Well, not only that, but I they uh, in the news, there were two human bodies found dumped in a dumpster with their heads cut off and the blood drained. Uh, not the same time. They were both, there were two different people found in two different dumpsters, not too long apart. I think within about the same month. I don't remember all the details. Um, but uh, after that, there was a news, you didn't hear any more about that. But uh, there was started having kidnappings you know, you know, there's thousands and thousands of children kidnapped in America, really. And a lot of times the states do it. They take children away from their parents and then they lose them. How do you lose children? Florida did that. Georgia's done that. I don't know about all the other states. I don't know about Nebraska and Texas and California, New York. You know what? Satanism is widespread. You have no idea. Matter of fact, pay attention and you'll see kidnappings like two to three weeks before Halloween and uh, Christmas and Easter. Those are the three big ones. Yeah. So why did God have, why did Josiah kill all these uh, high priests of the high places? Think about it. And one day, all these church people are going to be asked, why did you tolerate this filth? I told you what to do with witches and sorcerers. Why did you tolerate it? And and who do you think is teaching in these cemeteries? I mean, uh, Bible cemetery, I mean, seminaries. I had it right the first time. A lot of Satanists, people. A lot of Satanists. I'll guarantee you. I'll guarantee you. All right, so. Verse 21. 2 Kings 23, verse 21. So, Josiah got rid of the Sodomites, got rid of the, the Satanists. So what's he going to do? And the king commanded all the people, saying, Keep the Passover unto the Lord your God, as it is written in the book of this covenant. Surely there was not holden such a Passover from the days of the judges that judged Israel, nor in all the days of the kings of Israel, nor of the kings of Judah, but in the eighteenth year of King Josiah, wherein this Passover was holden to the Lord in Jerusalem. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits, and the wizards, and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem did Josiah put away. Uh, he didn't give him a Greyhound bus ticket and say, oh, well, go somewhere else, dudes. No. He put them away permanently. That he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book that Hilkiah the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart. And like unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him arose there any like him. 
Praise the Lord. Verse 26. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah because of all the provocations that Manasseh had provoked him withal. And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and will cast off this city Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, My name shall be there. Now the rest of the acts of Josiah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? In his days, Pharaoh Nikon, king of Egypt, went up against the king of Assyria to the river Euphrates, and King Josiah went against him, and he slew him at Megiddo when he had seen him. Um, so, and his servants carried him in a chariot, dead from Megiddo, and brought him to Jerusalem, and buried him in his own sepulcher, and the people of the land took jo Jehoiahaz, the son of Josiah, and anointed him, and made him king in his father's stead. So, evidently, um, the king of Egypt went up against the king of Assyria, and Josiah went against him, and he got killed. I don't know why he would do that. I don't know. I'll have to ask Josiah if, if I'm found worthy to make it to the kingdom and I get to meet Josiah, I'll have to ask him one day. What were you thinking, dude? Pharaoh's no, I mean, Egypt's no good and, and Assyria was no good. Why were you fighting against him? I don't know. Um, and the people of the land took, took Jehoahaz, son of Josiah, and anointed him and made him king in his father's stead. Jehoahaz. Jehoiahaz was 20 and 3 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Hamutal, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, I've read this story before. And he, read that, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. And Pharaoh Nikon put him in bands in Riblah in the land of Hamath, that he might not reign in Jerusalem and put the land to a tribute of a hundred talents of silver and a talent of gold. And Pharaoh Nikon, Nikon made Eliakim, the son of Josiah, king in the room of Josiah's father and turned his name to Jehoiakim and took Jehoiakaz, uh, Jehoiakaz away. And he came to Egypt and died there. And Jehoiakim gave the silver and the gold to Pharaoh, but he taxed the land to give the money according to the commandment of Pharaoh, he exacted the silver and the gold of the people of the land of every one according to his taxation to give it unto Pharaoh Nicol. Nicol. Jehoiakim was twenty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned eleven years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Jebudah, the daughter of Pediah of Rumah. So evidently these guys had different mothers. So I guess uh, Josiah was busy. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord according to all that his fathers had done. Oh boy, here we go. Jehoiakim. Verse, chapter, well, hold on here. I'm not sure I want to continue this. We've already gone over an hour. We're just now getting into the point where... Um, Nebuchadnezzar is getting ready to take Jerusalem captive. Maybe I ought to make this another Bible study. A part five. Now you know why the Lord did all this. I mean, you know, come on, people. And has America done anything that pleases the Lord? Not in a lot of years, let me tell you something. Not in over a hundred years that I know of over a hundred years. Honestly, I don't think America would have had a civil war if we'd have been following the Bible. And uh, everybody tells us, oh yeah, the civil war was over slavery. Uh, no, it wasn't. Trust me, there is nobody, hardly anybody that uh, hated slavery and wished the Africans had never been brought to America more than me. 
I wish the slave ships had never arrived on the shores of America. Trust me, I, I, with all my heart, I wish we'd have never had slavery in this country. Believe me, our jail, we wouldn't have needed a lot, uh, uh, a lot less jails. And, um, but, uh, you know, it's probably been well over 150 years, probably close to 200 years since America had a godly people. You want to read some really good stuff? Read Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, or the Wesley Brothers, John Wesley. Um, you know? Those kind of people. You know, America is, it's gone. It's gone. Uh, we're, we're entering into the time of judgment, and the church world is asleep. You know, they're, I don't know. You're going to start seeing uh, God's wrath on America. And only a remnant of the Lord are going to be uh, probably safe. So, don't kill the messenger, people. That's all I am. I'm just the guy that read the book a couple of times. Like I say, this ain't my first rodeo. Might be my second or third one, but it ain't my first. All right, well, I'm going to cut this off, make this, uh, we'll, we'll do Nebuchadnezzar. I was hoping to be done by now, but, uh, you know, I want to drive this home. Um, and home is heaven, people, for those that are in Christ. You know, everybody thinks, all these pre-tribbers, they don't read this stuff. They don't look at America today. You think America's any worse or any better than back in the day of, of what I've been reading for the last hour? We're no better. We're no worse. We're the same. We are, you know, maybe we're not burning our children in the fire. No, we're, we're going to uh, uh, Dr. Cohen at the abortion clinic. Or is it Dr. Goldberg? Or Silverstein, I forget. But, uh, yeah. Is there any difference? Not in my book. Not in my book. All right, people. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.